Good evening, you're watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Tonight we are joined by Diwa De Leon, multi-awarded film scorer, arranger, composer, and live musician. He is also one of the founders of the band Makiling Ensemble, now simply known as Makiling. Good evening, Diwa. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, you were born to a musical family. No? You yes. composed your first piece at five. Yes, a piano, a short, very, very short piano piece right. under the guidance of my father, of course. Of course, <laughs> we know your grandfather, national artist Felipe de Leon. Now, what was it like growing in this kind of environment, musicians? Well, it's, it was very encouraging to do art, any kind of artistic stuff. We are encouraged to do it. It's, in fact, we are expected to do it. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I grew up listening to classical music, mm. kondiman music, uh, ethnic music, everything I was exposed to because of my father. Yes. So did you feel pressure that, that I have to grow up to be a musician? What, what was it? I mean, was it a but, natural thing for you? At, uh, at a younger age, before teenagers, before I was a teenager, it was a natural thing. I, mm. I thought na every day. Uh, every other children, marunong oh, din ng music. Oh, eh. Kung baka, ayun lang, alam mo yung may konting na, pagka-naive pa na, oh, oh. in a sense. But later on, as I grew up, parang, teka, are they grooming me to become a right. musician like them also? Or, or an artist? So, at, later on, I felt some pressure. Because you went to the Philippine High School in Makiling, yes. where you graduated valedictorian, yeah. right? Of course, that's, that's, that's the start of also a lot of the nurturing for your musical career? Well, it's, what, it's, I would consider my time in Philippine High School for the Arts as one of my peak uh, mm -hmm. artistic uh, uh, realizations. Uh -huh. Because back in elementary, I was one of the lowest, lowest grade students. Really? And when I, trans when I went to high school in Makiling, uh, I totally transformed. Mm. I, so I, I was encouraged to study and everything went, changed for me in Philippine high school for the So arts. what is the method like? I mean, how do you feel um, having gone to that kind of school? Because you also met your bandmates mm, there, yes. your Makiling bandmates. What do they actually teach you that nurtures this artistic spirit in you? Well, first of all, I feel, I feel very blessed to have gone that, to that experience. Oh. Pero, uh, yun nga, eh, parang dun din sa Philippine High School for the Arts, it's like a multiplied version of my family. Mm. In Philippine High School for the Arts, they teach you to appreciate all kinds of cultures, music, arts, visual arts, dance, and they do not discourage you from learning any particular kung, for example, yung time na yun, sikat yung Nirvana. Uh -huh. If we want to listen to Nirvana, but we can also listen to Mozart and Beethoven and Kondiman, we are all encouraged to absorb all of these well uh, knowledge. Well rounded talaga, oh, no? Very, uh -huh. Yes, very. But you also tried to veer away from that because you felt medyo may trappings ka na sa musical life, exactly. no? You went into visual <laughs> communication. Uh, visual, visual arts. Visual arts, I'm sorry. In Philippine yeah. High School, for as I said, there are uh, arts majors you're, uh, you can enroll in. So visual arts, dance, music, mm -hmm. and uh, creative writing. I enrolled in visual arts. It's like the first two years of fine arts in UP. So I, I took visual arts because I felt na I was expected too much to become a musician <laughs> because my family, they're all wonderful musicians. Mm. Some are musicians, lawyers, etc. But for a time, I felt, is this really all I can do? So mm -hmm. I tried to challenge myself and mm -hmm. be a visual artist. But of course, eventually, it, ka rin, no? I went back to music because I felt it was really the one I wanted to do. You embraced your roots, <laughs> right? Exactly. So when you were in Makiling, uh, you met your bandmates. Yes. Tell, tell us the story. How did you come together? How did you form Makiling Ensemble? Well, uh, my bandmates, the five of us, we did not really start as good friends. Some of us were, were uh, rivals even. Mm. But eventually, we grew close as the years went on by. And luckily, after high school, we all went to uh, UP Diliman. Mm. So in UP Diliman and in Mak Makiling, we, we, had, uh, we had these uh, productions where we were encouraged to be the musicians and the visual artists for, mm -hmm. for performance arts. Uh, for example, shadow play productions. Mm -hmm. I was always tasked to be one of the music, uh, music production, and my other bandmates would be part of the shadow mm. play. Or sometimes we would interchange. So we formed a certain bond yeah. that uh, we did not want to lose when we went to college. So why not? Let's, 
let's still be together uh, in a band and create together. Create more. Yeah. Uh, let's do some more of that stuff that we used to do, and. It, it, uh, it all started from yeah. there. Now you all had different musical interests, some like hip hop, yes. some like alternative music. How did you reconcile these different tastes well, in, to form in your the Philippine band? High School for the Arts, one of the main major things that they teach you is appreciate Philippine music. Mm -hmm, of course. And we all grew fond of Philippine music. We listened to Joey Ayala, Noel Cabangon, mm -hmm. Grace Nono, who is also a graduate of Philippine High School for the Arts. And it was that common interest that glued ah. us together. So, so even if one of the members likes hip hop or uh, pop songs, we would still use ethnic music as the base and we would inject other elements from other music from time to time. Galing. So you would classify your music as, it's called Filipino world music. We, we, right? we coin it, we coin the term Pinoy, Pinoy world music world. because world music is such a vague term. Exactly. I think it's just a term used by record labels to re label something that they don't really understand. Mm -hmm. ah, this sounds pop, but it has some <laughs> jazz or Latin elements. Let's put it world music. So <laughs> it sounds we, a little ethnic, then it yes. becomes world. So we made the term Pinoy world music to specify this is world music that comes from the Philippines. Yeah. Usually world music is a bit underrated. No? We have so many great musicians. I mean, even with your music, um, it doesn't really go commercial. Why do you think that happens? Well, I think... Uh, it's not just in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It's a world, worldwide phenomenon yes, that exactly. uh, people prefer uh, top 40s hits. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we already accepted at a young age. So yeah. we, did, we do not really try to compete with yes. the mainstream art, artists and mainstream music. Instead, we just focus on those people who really like the world music and yeah. we invite them. So we do not try to force... Uh, he's, he, he likes Lady Gaga. Let's force him to listen to... <laughs> yeah. No, we don't play. Also, I also like Lady Gaga, but yeah. I, do not, I do not force anyone who does not like ethnic music to listen to ethnic music. Right. So, each his own. <laughs> yeah, so you're just doing what you love, right? Yes. Well, let's talk more about uh, the music of Makiling. No? You have three albums. Yes. You've launched three albums now. Uh, well, four albums four if you count the new, uh, the new EP. Ah, okay. So you're, how has the music evolved? Of course, always with the Filipino ethnic instruments like this hegelong yes. we see here. Um, when you first started out, what were you trying to do? What, what kind of album were you trying to put out? We were just trying to make an album that was very raw. It, it, we had, it had really no fixed direction. Mm -hmm. Like, let's make something that sounds ethnic, but it, it has violin, then guitar, and all the instruments that we, we all know how to play at that time. Yeah. So, so this first album was called Malakas at Maganda? Ah, the, the first album is Medyo Modern. Ah, sorry. Okay. And it, it was mostly acoustic, but ethnic also. Mm -hmm. The second album, Patintero, Ilalim ng Buwan, we, oh. we try to incorporate pop songs and lyrics this time. Mm -hmm. So medyo mas ano na siya, mas may pagka radio friendly a bit. Uh -oh. And sa third album, sa Malakas at Maganda, we went back to the our styles of Medyo Modern, but this time, with better skills. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting how you infuse different kinds of elements from Caribbean exactly. to Latin to Celtic mm -hmm. music. Because we love all those kinds of music. We, yeah. we are influenced by them and we do not let them... Uh, well, we, we take advantage mm -hmm. of it. So yeah. we use all of it. So you bring in these influences yes. and make sure you know somehow there's jazz, a bit of mm. pop, a bit of rock, electronica even. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, One of your tracks has Noel Cabangon as a, yes. as a guest vocalist. You're very lucky. <laughs> you, yeah, he guessed it here too. And very, of course, very much within your genre. Mm. You know? um, with some of these collaborations, how did they come about? Is it um, something that you... Well, you've worked with many different artists mm. in the past, no? With, 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 uh, with Noel Cabangon, it's very easy because he's very down-to-earth. One mm. of the, uh, the most humble persons I've ever Totoo known is yun. Noel Cabangon. And when we ask him, Hey, Kuya Noel, pwede ka bang kumanta sa second album namin? O sige, kailan? Uh -huh. Sabi lang, isang studio. Talagang ano, napakadaling kausap dahil madalas, madalas na namin siyang nakasama sa ibang performances and medyo kabanding na rin namin siya. Yeah, you've gone a long way from your first performance was in CCP, wasn't it? This yeah, was 19, 97. Was it 97? <laughs> Tell us about that because it was what was it called Biyaheng Makiling. Yeah, no? Biyaheng okay. Makiling is a, an exhibit of the Philippine High School for the Art Students and we wanted to to, uh, to to get involved because we just graduated and we feel na pwede may K pa kaming maki, oh. ano, makisama. So, Tata Nanding, the director, Nanding Josef, at that time, 
we ask, hey, Tata Nanding, can we perform uh, as one song number lang? Sige na, kahit walang bayad. <laughs> <laughs> Ganun yun, no? When oh, you're that's how, we, that's how everyone starts. So, he let us perform and that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was the start of the career. Yes, exactly. Right. Now, along the way, you, of course, you went solo. Mm -hmm. So, you felt that you wanted to veer a little bit away from yeah. the, the way, well, the, the, the thrust or the style of Makiling. Mm -hmm. What happened? How because uh, the style of Makiling is already established as a acoustic so, and sort of electronic ethnic. Medyo ano na, may, may established sound na. Mm -hmm. I want to explore some techno sounds, but I feel, I feel na hindi siya bagay sa established sound ng Makiling. So, there are, th there are these kinds of music that I want to explore with the Hegalong. Yes. But I want to do, do it in a, a different style that is extremely different from Makiling. So I do it on my own. So basically you wanted more a creative freedom. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but you still perform with Makiling. Yes, we then. still perform regularly twice a month. Yeah. So how did the band uh, let's say influence your solo career? Well, for a time, uh, for a time, Mga 10 years na. Uh -oh. 10 years na, I was very focused on the band. Hindi ko pinapansin if I would get a regular job or a day job eventually. I Eventually, I noticed, hey, uh, my bandmate is now teaching at this school and he's now also a professor at ganito ganyan. What, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so, I... I uh, Existential I, I, questions. Oh, parang ganun eh. Parang, so, I tried everything. Parang... All, all kinds of jobs, call center, and kung ano -ano pa, arranger ng karaoke, karaoke music. <laughs> and eventually, why, why not just build my own studio and do my own stuff? So mm -hmm. it started from there. It, it all started because of a necessity mm -hmm. to survive in a, a career-wise. Yes. Because uh, eventually I realized bands are not forever. Eh. That's right. Uh, or even if we last... 20 or 30 years, we won't ever be as active as we were in the first 10 years. Mm -hmm. eh. Ngayon pa lang, medyo, ano na, nag-lilo na kasi, nag-mellow na. Eh. Uh -oh. We feel na we, 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 we earn some, some, ano, some, some rest. Yes. So, so from, from, because of that, I now, ano, I now uh, am very proactive sa aking solo stuff. Yeah. And you formed something called the Hegalong Project. Yes, exactly. Tell us a little bit more about it. The Hegalong Project is, uh, because I've been playing this instrument, for uh, 20 plus years. Yes. So Hegalong Project is the, the project I've been telling you na, oh. uh, the, the different style. So the, in this style, I, I focus on the Hegalong as the melody instrument. Mm -hmm. But I use different styles like pop, rock, ethnic, jazz, very modern styles, not, mm -hmm. not really world music. But uh, for, for example, to, uh, to put it, uh, to explain it better is like Lady Gaga's music. Yes. You take away the vocals of Lady Gaga, and put the heg along. We'll be hearing some of that later. Yes, later. But I do love how you're able, you know, now with all the young ones getting into electronic dance music, that's yes. what you're injecting into yes, the, exactly. the ethnic scene, no? Mm. And it's funny because even before I heard of, learned of the Hegalong, for you, I always thought it sounded like the Samisen of Japan. Yeah, exactly. Many times we are not even aware of our own local mm. instruments. So for you, it's kind of an advocacy also educating yes, the Filipinos. Uh, kubaga, we have this beautiful instrument. So instead, I, I can play the violin and guitar, but I could also use I could also use those two instruments for my solo stuff. But why not? Why waste a, a beautiful instrument that no one else has? Yeah, that's so, and you even make these on your own. You build. Uh, I I, des I sketch the designs, but I have a real professional guitar maker mm. do the the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now you've won many awards also for well in your individual career for film scoring, yes. like the recent musical. What was it? Um, Emir. 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 Yes. Emir. Um, you've done also, um, you won the Gawad Urian in 2013, Best Music for the Film by Bayin. Yes. So what is it like working on a musical score versus, let's say, your own musical mm. compositions and then a TV jingle or TV commercial jingle? It's all very comfortable because <laughs> I always do it in the comfort of my own chair in my <laughs> studio. In musical scoring, it's really very, very, one of the, one of, uh, one of the best... Uh, uh, one of the best career paths mm. for, for local musicians especially because it's not very demanding in terms of creativity but you ha just have to coordinate with the director. Yeah. And sometimes uh, you, you're just given creative freedom on what you want to do except for, of course, of course if it's a very specific type of music that mm -hmm. the director is look looking for. Right. But basically it, boils, it all boils down to 
what the director wants you yes. do it. Well, in a very simple example, mm. you did the theme for Survivor Philippines. Yes. So how did they dictate what um, the music should sound well, for, like? Well, uh, for the Survivor Philippines, it's a very established mm. brand. So their music is also a bit well known uh, mm -hmm. all around the world. So the Castaway Productions, who is the creative director, uh, gave me a piece of music that they've already used. Use this music and put ethnic Filipino ethnic instruments to it. So and that's, uh, that's the localized version. So world it. music for Survivor. Yes, exactly. Well, we'll be talking more about your music and career later. Right now, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we will talk more about Pinoy world music. News Cafe will return after these messages. Welcome back to News Cafe on the Solar News Channel with our guest, Diwa De Leon. So Dio, we just heard the song Inertia from your, what is it? This is a, it's a new single. New single. Mm -hmm. How did this come about? How did you compose this? I was, I was thinking of a really techno dance music that I want to write for the Hegelong. And the, the melody just came about in my head while I was walking towards the MIT station. <laughs> yeah, and this is very much influenced because, um, of course, yes, techno dance mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is very much injected into a lot of online games. Yes. And you are a gamer. Yes, exactly. Which is, this really influences your style. Yes, I was a gamer since I was, uh, I think, I was, since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a big Nintendo fan. Yes, exactly. And, so these um, also, of course, you see this in your YouTube channel. Yes. Let's talk about the string, the string player gamer. Yeah. This is your online persona on yes. YouTube. So you have over 11,000 subscribers. Yes. Uh, almost, almost. Almost. 11, almost okay, <laughs> almost. And over 4 million viewers. Yes. For, for, so how did you start this um, YouTube channel? Well, uh, because I was born in the 80s and the 80s was one of the, one of the best uh, time to become a gamer because Super Mario was introduced, Pac-Man was introduced, Sonic the Hedgehog. The, all the great franchises that are very popular now started in that era. Mm -hmm. And I was proud, I am proud to be one of the, one of the early gamers. <laughs> and my audience is primarily composed of almost my same age, mm -hmm. of the same gamers who were born in that era. And there are millions of them right. in YouTube. One of the biggest audiences in YouTube 
are gamers. Gamers, okay. And the, the most popular channels are gaming channels. Mm -hmm. So me, being a gamer and a musician, I said to myself, how can I take advantage of this on YouTube? So yeah. I, I, taking that knowledge, I, I, wrote, I started writing Legend of Zelda arrangements, Super Mario arrangements, Final Fantasy arrangements, and tested the waters. Will people like this? Yeah. And they, I, I, and they did. So I kept doing it, I kept doing it and doing it for since uh, maybe since 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has grown. My channel has grown ever yeah. since. And you also take on different personas there. You dress up as a conductor yeah. <laughs> and you have your Mario Orchestra, I dress which is up. just you. <laughs> yeah, I, I clone myself with <laughs> via camera editing. It's yeah. just me and a bunch of bunch of costumes it's so much fun <laughs> i love watching it makes me laugh and i'm also i was really into nintendo before so when i see and, and then you also do songs of ragnarok yeah um, any any kind of gaming right now, nowadays I, I let my subscribers request right so it it makes them feel more involved if you do if you make an arrangement of their requested song and there's so many requests from all the kinds of games that you can think of they have a request for it. Would you say this has really helped your career, having a YouTube it's a, it's a, it's a It supports my career because uh, I, it, there, this is some, something different. I can just, make, uh, just, uh, just have fun. Mm. Because, mm -hmm. of course, Hegalong Project, music scoring, and uh, uh, TV commercials, it's all very serious business. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to adhere to certain rules. That's right. But in YouTube channel, you are very much your own person. So... Uh -huh. I just do whatever I think is the best. The uh, most popular video games right now are Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasy. So I do those and, they, mm -hmm. and the requests just keep on coming and the subscribers keep on coming. So yeah. it might, I must be doing something right. And what's very interesting is you are able to collaborate with other gamers, musicians yes. also online. Yes, uh, I have, uh, I've been able to collaborate with pianists and singers, but I have never met them in person. I just contacted them through YouTube. Hey, maybe you want to do a, a video game song of this. I'll do the instrumental and you, you sing it. Yeah, like I saw the one, the parody you did of New Republic's Counting Stars. Yes, yes. You called it Star Power. Power, power no, Stars. Sorry, power Stars. It's, How did, so the girl on there, you, I thought you yeah. filmed it together. Yes, uh, the, the, the singer is Lady Game Lyric. Uh, she writes parodies using popular songs like Rihanna songs and... Uh, Justin Timberlake. And she's song. based in LA. And she's based in LA. I've never met her in person, but uh, I asked her if she wants to do a, a video game parody. And then that's where it started. And of course, there's another pianist from Australia. I've never met her also, but I, we, 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 we both did a song from Final Fantasy. I did the orchestra part and she played the piano. <laughs> that's amazing. This is all available on the, on, on on your... the String Player Gamer channel. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about musicians and online well, or social media and online yeah, platforms? I think uh, in the Philippines, uh, social media and, for example, YouTube musicians in the Philippines are, are uh, musicians in the Philippines are still unaware that you can use YouTube mm. as a, an alternative career path, because, for example, I for example I am earning uh, through ad revenue from my YouTube yeah. videos, yeah. and top it off with the uh, CD sales of my video game arrangements. Nowadays, you can uh, put video game arrangements of other composers in iTunes. Yeah. Uh, because before, you have to get a lawyer and all of that. But now, it's all easier. So, Filipino musici musicians should, should know that YouTube can be used to promote their own music. Amazing. So now even, because a lot of your, like your albums, mm. if you've used an independent label, your own. Yes, my own and label. And people think that this is difficult because it will not really promote it, your work versus a commercial label. It's really very easy. It's very easy to start, but uh, it starts with one share in Facebook. That's true. Just one share and everyone will share. If it's a very good video or very good music or very good arrangement, people will share it all over the world. And yeah. You will eventually get your own following, but it, of course, it takes time. Everything it take, it, everything in the world, I think, it yeah. takes time to build. I yeah. think I I only got, gained ten thousand subscribers early this year after uh, doing YouTube videos f since two thousand nine. Yeah. But then again, I was not very consistent back then. I started to only post every Friday just this year. Mm -hmm. So now, because of these regular posts, your following has increased. Yeah, it's increased. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting maybe like 1,000 new subscribers every month, and it's very, 
very phenomenal wow. for me. <laughs> so that's your playground. Yes. But let's talk about now your work as a composer and mm. scorer. So um, when you when you do um, let's say how does how do your projects come about? Do you let's say do you have a preference also? Do you look more for TV commercials, film, um, well, telenovela? You also do scoring <laughs> for various TV. But as a as a, a freelance composer, I. I really cannot choose. I cannot cho really choose uh, what projects come to me. So, the most attitudes of freelance musicians—they just really accept everything, and mm -hmm. I do that too because it's work. Yeah. But the the best thing about it because we love music, so I get to work and play with what I love, and get paid at the same time. Yeah. And Even because, political campaigns you've done jingles, yeah, campaign occasionally, jingles. No? I, occasionally, I do that. And hymns as well. You yes. Do, company hymns. Company. I, I do everything because it's fun to do. It's yeah. music. I like. I love music. I love creating music, and it's work at what, the same time. Yeah. So I have to support because I have a I have a ten year old daughter, and my wife is also. Uh, working in a museum, but yeah. we, we have to support my, our family, so it's true. We have to get work. Who, and by the way, the wife and daughter do cameo appearances in your in videos. My YouTube videos, yes. <laughs> so do watch that. <laughs> you get free talents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have no choice, huh, but to join you. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about some of your favorite or most unusual projects. Is there one that really stands out? One or two, maybe, that you enjoyed, mm -hmm. maybe particularly. Well, one of one of the one of the my favorite projects is. Probably uh, my first film project, which is uh, in 2008, Colorete, mm. because it was the first and only time that I got involved in a video shooting. In the film shooting, it was very hot in the, the venue. It was some a province I, which I forgot. It was very hot in the morning, and then a typhoon went mm -hmm. in, the, in the same afternoon. Yeah. and washed away the set. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow, what a first experience for you. But I had to direct, the mu because it's a semi-musical, so yeah. I had to direct the singers at the same time. Yeah. So I think that was the most uh, memorable project for me. <laughs> Very memorable. And your other collaborations also, going back to your work with the Hegelong, your, your solo yes. project. You've done other co collaborations, like with Cookie Chua. Yes. Uh, in my, my, my first Hegelong album, Memories on Two Strings, I asked Cookie Chua if she wants to if she's a, uh, if she wants to collaborate for a song which I wrote and she agreed just like uh, no, Mang Ma Noel Kabangon she's also very yeah. very humble and very madadaling kausap yes she was so, here too with the Tres Marias very <laughs> wonderful musician so ayun uh, because actually when I wrote that song Moonrise I was actually already imagining it being sung by her ah so in in a sense that was written with her voice in yeah. mind. I really like that song. It gives it somehow it has a Celtic feel to yes, it. No? Yes. Even the video and you the videos you direct. Well, you uh, direct and uh, that was the first and only video where I hired a, re a professional uh -huh. uh, uh, production crew. Yeah. So uh, it, it, Tempest Films. Mm. Uh, it, it was also I think their first music video. So it was our, a first project for both of us together. Yeah. Do you look at other collaborations? Are you looking at further, maybe working? Of course, with I'm people? always thinking of. Uh, well, but, but my thinking for collaborations is recently is more geared towards YouTube, mm. because it's, it's a it's a choose your own adventure. Eh? Yeah. Do I choose this guitarist or do I choose this singer for my next video? It's like experimenting. Yeah. With, yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of them agreeing to to collaborate with you. Of yeah. course, it's hard to approach those with five million subscribers because they're way busier than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I, so I only approach those with a similar crowd as me. So if someone has 12,000 subscribers and I have 10,000, hey, maybe you want to <laughs> That's trade <a> fans. <laughs> Imagine you're able to travel the world through your keyboard, exactly. through just your computer, right? <laughs> well, speaking of traveling, you've also traveled around the world to perform live. Yes. Now you've been recently to China and Cambodia. Yeah, Tell us about uh, this trip. I've recently been in China to perform for a Nanning International Folk Music Festival, along with 19 other countries. It's an annual music festival or organized by Nanning, by Nanning City in, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in China. And they invite musicians for, from all over the world to perform at uh, various events, like pocket concerts all over the city. Yeah. And we, uh, I was one of those fortunate to be invited by the, by the Chinese embassy. What was the reception like? I mean, how would you describe the audience, maybe versus what the reception here in the Philippines? The audience, in a, the audience during the festival is very heightened. Mm. It's like they're really, really into it. Because I think, as if, uh, let me put it this way, when, 
when they when the delegates from Romania uh, went down from the bus wearing their very traditional costumes, the audience really cheered very loud yeah. because they never see like anyone like anyone wearing like that in in China. Mm -hmm. So something really local, cultural to uh, uh, to Romania is not, not present in China, and they really it's and well really accepted. Very, huh? Well accepted, and yeah. of course. When we were wearing our tubaos and our colorful uh, bandanas, yeah. they also cheered a bit, but they cheered more with the music. <laughs> yeah, because it's very different. I'm sure yours really stands out. I mm. don't think um, re anyone really does this kind of fusion of the Western electronic pop with ethnic instruments. Yeah, very rare, very rare. But in the Philippines, very yeah, rare. Yeah, in the Philippines, yeah. So um, you also do talks, no? You give talks yeah. around. Occasionally, uh, I give lectures about uh, how to incorporate ethnic music uh, in uh, modern music, and also sometimes I give lectures on how to earn, uh, how to earn money from your uh, from YouTube videos. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, do you feel that more musicians are taking advantage of this new media and technology? They, uh, some Maybe of them get turned off by the by the time it has uh, it, it takes to build your channel, but I'm I'm sure uh, eventually they'll uh, they'll they'll make it a challenge on their own. Yeah. To, to do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, how would you describe your music? Because it's also evolving since the time mm. you were with Makiling. Um, are you changing with the times? Are you trying to adapt new styles? Or what are you trying also to convey to your but listeners? For my own music, I take an element always of the most popular songs from today. For example, the most popular songs today are Justin Bieber, Lady <laughs> Gaga, uh, Miley Cyrus, all of that. So I take something of what I think I can learn and incorporate. For example, use the beat of this song and incorporate the keyboard part of that song. Maybe I can use that on my own music, then put the hegalong in it. Mm -hmm. So it's, I always uh, evolve with the times. Yeah. But you play other instruments. Apart from the hegalong, you always also play the violin. Yeah, I play the violin. Didgeridoo. The, a didgeridoo, hegalong, guitar, and some flutes. Yeah. But I, can, I could easily use the violin as the, my main instrument for, uh, for my own music, but I prefer the hegalong because it's very unique to the Philippines. And I think uh, it's, uh, I'm proud to use it because I'm representing my country because of it. <laughs> yeah. And you're making us proud. Thank you very Thank much for you. that. <laughs> now we'll take another short break. News Cafe will return, so stay tuned. <laughs>
You're still watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel with our guest, Dio De Leon. All right, Dio, we just heard Evolve from your album Memories and Two Strings. Yes. Tell us about this song. This, this song is a bit more techno and jazz. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you notice, there are some passages that are like jazzy, jazzy solos, but there's a techno beat. And in the middle part, there's a very, very a hip hop house. Very mixture. interesting. <laughs> Kaya nga, I think this kind of style brings in more of the mm. youth, I guess. Who would you say uh, responds to this most? What kind of audience? I, I think the, the most uh, responsive audience, because I also post the Hegalong videos in my YouTube mm. channel. And the, the, the most responsive, responsive audience are usually the unexpected ones. Like, I, I can see this person. He subscribed to the channel of Lady Gaga and uh, Miley Cyrus, but he appreciates my music. And some of them even uh, want to learn hey, where, where, do I, where can Tutorial, I buy a hangalong? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And it's very unexpected. Anyone can really appreciate the music because it's uh, up to date. Yeah. And there's a, an element of a very familiar beat and a celeb an element of mystery with exactly. the Hegelong. Exactly. <laughs> and it seems you can use this as a background or scoring to yes, so many exactly. different things. And Which I already themes. did. <laughs> yes, exactly. So they should log on to your, to your website to find <laughs> out. Now let's talk about the Filipino uh, music industry. What mm. do you think of the situation of OPM right now? But the situation of OPM right now is really very, very, uh, very still dependent. Mm. Right now it's very dependent on uh, old hits. Hmm. I, I, I personally find nothing bad with that because if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But sometimes it's uh, t up to the extent that uh, uh, innovation isn't much encouraged anymore. Hmm. And I think there are only very, very few, such as maybe Noel Cabangon and Joy Ayala, who still like to push uh, a Filipino identity to their music and new music. Hmm. But, but if I think... Uh, because the OPM, Philippine music industry, is also a business, and uh, mm -hmm. you cannot really separate the music from the, bus from the business. So I think it's just a compromise. At least we're not purely per uh, playing foreign music. At least even if there's a sense of uh, all just Filipino revival songs, at least still Filipino music. Right. And so with... I'm, I'm very kind yeah. <laughs> to that. <laughs> well, with Filipino world music, it's quite difficult now to penetrate. Mm. And you have said that you want to educate but not alienate because yes. this is a niche market. Yes. So, so for, uh, for, from what I said earlier, uh, we do not try to force world mm. music anymore. Mm. In my point of view, maybe some other artists from world music mm. will disagree with me. But I personally don't think it's going to work if you, sti if you force feed your, the world mm -hmm. music to those who really ca can't really appreciate so instead, just focus on those who think, those you, you, uh, you think will really appreciate your music and let it grow from there. Yeah. Because it will really spread through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a small group, at least it's a group that will really digest your music. Exactly, a scene mm -hmm. from your own experiences. Yes. <laughs> what have been the biggest challenges for you in the industry or in your career? Well, uh, there, there was a time, in the time of Makiling, maybe in our seventh year, where we attempted to... Uh, penetrate uh, world, uh, the, the mainstream scene. Uh, we, we, we even got a professional manager and we had a complete makeover <laughs> of our costumes and all that. And we made a demo that sounds very pop and mm. pop rock. And we submitted it to uh, record, record, uh, mainstream record labels such as BMG or uh, EMI and all, of, all mm. of those uh, companies. But eventually, long story short, it did not work out Mostly because of us. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us did not want to compromise the identity that, that, that we already have. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it also comes, uh, it, the, uh, another factor is also one of the record labels said, we cannot sell this kind of music. So we have uh, either you go full pop or we cannot mm -hmm. really sell you. So, so I, it became a sort of crossroads for mm -hmm. the band. Do we continue world music? or do we trans transcend to another style? So we, of course, we chose to stay with what we really yeah. like. So the lesson there is be yourself, right? Yes, Don't exactly. try to, so basically you're trying to kind of conform <laughs> to the commercial. Yeah, um, we, because uh, we just wanted to say to ourselves when we grow older, that at least we try. Exactly, that's what <laughs> because, matters. Because instead of just regretting, 
what if we try this? Uh, Yun nga, no regrets, <laughs> diba? So, no, no regrets. <laughs> yeah, so imagine at your young age, you were able to try, if you went to try visual arts, mm. but you realize you now are at a point where you know who you really are. Yes, exactly. So, but, where is your music going now? Where, what do you think you see for yourself in the future? I th for, 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 uh, for, for Makiling, we, will keep, we are planning to record a fourth album now. We will, we will still maintain the identity of ethnic music, but this time we'll maybe go back to our acoustic roots. Mm. For my solo career, I think I, I'm, the, the next album I'm planning to make is a dance album with wow, a Hegel. Wow, really? That, more dance than what yes. you already have now. So, so we're going to see electronic dance music. More, and and more. maybe there's a, a bit of rap and hip, more hip hop. So it's really, uh, I'm just really playing around. It's like a big playground for me. So. Whatever interests me at the moment, I will try to make that. <laughs> right. And you're still okay to work on an independent basis? Yes, no? you because feel... I have no, uh, no record producers dictating me, ah, you should do a pop song like Taylor Swift. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're happy with the way, and also yes. you have your YouTube and yes. other social media Because support. I find a way, I, I found a way to, to, uh, to enjoy it and sell it at the same time mm -hmm. uh, on my own terms. Yeah. Now, your bandmates are professors. They teach music, no? How do you feel about well, One of teaching? my bandmates is now... Uh, one of my old bandmates is now in uh, Singapore teaching music there. Uh, two of my bandmates is... Uh, one is a music teacher and the other is an art teacher. Mm -hmm. Have you so, ever thought of teaching? Well, you used to teach, but <laughs> you prefer to focus on the performing. I, I used to teach uh, violin lessons, private lessons, but I, uh, I guess the teaching is really not for me because... I found the stress and responsibility too much for me to take. Yeah, <laughs> to each his own, no? Yes. <laughs> now let's talk about Pinoy music taste, no? So mm. Having been exposed to different types of music and you are also a composer mm. and lover of music, obviously. Has the Filipino uh, taste evolved, do you think, through the years? Uh, well, the, our taste in artists evolved, but still, there's still this favoritism towards American pop. Which is not really a bad thing, personally. I, I love American pop music. But sometimes, we just tend to depend on what we like to hear mm -hmm. and not experiment anymore on something new. Of yeah. course, there are the, those daring ones who will always try the new, the new stuff. But in, in general, we've become too comfortable or sometimes too complacent to, to depend our, uh, mm. on uh, American pop mm -hmm. or Western pop and not giving our own music a chance. Don't you think this also shows the power of the media because there's so much focus on these commercial artists or bands and they're mm. not giving enough attention to, shall we say, underrated artists who aren't, you know, like unappreciated. Well, it was, uh, uh, again, it, it's because of it's a business. Mm. So they will really have to promote the popular ones because mm -hmm. they get the ratings. Yeah. So it's really an endless cycle. And hopefully, someday, it will be broken by education. <laughs> That's right. That's, which is what you're trying to do, too, yeah. with your music. But, uh, I mean, I'm very kind to that, that situation. So, I guess I just accept it as it is, do my own stuff on my own terms, and if uh, Filipinos like it, then I'll do it. To, uh, then I'll keep doing it. But I'm focusing more on the international market mm -hmm. via YouTube because may, maybe, what, who knows, maybe if... Uh, if I get more popular internationally, then I get more attention locally. That's what happens, isn't it? Normally, exactly. that's what happens here in the Philippines. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I really, uh, I, I'm really, it's not that I don't care. I just accept things right. as it is. You're working with what you have. Mm, yes, you know? exactly. Now, most of your listeners or your subscribers also on YouTube, for example, are actually international. Yes. International My biggest based. audience is from the United States, actually, because huh. uh, one of the biggest of course, one of the biggest markets in the world is America. Hmm. And one of the biggest video game markets is America, Japan, and then Europe. Right. So most of my audiences are based on those three countries. Wow, well, so basically you've, you're successful. You think this is, you're pretty happy with where you are I'm now. I'm pretty happy, but it could, uh, <laughs> it could improve. And it will. So, yeah. so, so who knows, maybe next year, 50,000 subscribers and 100 or win million subscribers. <laughs> Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't plan to stop on that YouTube thing. And I think it's a growing thing. And the revenue is also growing, which is a good thing. So why not stop? Why, why stop? So I'll just keep doing it. So thank you very much, Diva, thank for you. being thank here. Thank you very and much. Good luck with the rest of the work. And we look forward to hearing more thank later you. on.
That's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank my guest, Dio De Leon, for being with us tonight in another episode of News Cafe Full of Music. Now, if you have any comments on our episode for tonight, you may share them on our Twitter and Facebook pages. You can also download the Solar News Mobile app on your Android and iOS devices to watch News Cafe via live streaming and catch up on our previous episodes. Join us again next Thursday for another round of interesting discussions here on News Cafe. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Good night. Para sa mga nasa buhok, hindi na pa nakasalanan ng mga